Hello, and welcome to the Voluntary Virtues Network. My name is Michael, and I'll be your host this evening on Something is Rotten in the State of Denmark. Today, I have Adam Huisington with me. Is that pronounced correct? That was perfect. Good. And we'll talk a bit about what comes to our mind. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure. We have discussed a little. In yeah, we're just still winging it, I guess. <laughs> we can't really come up with any subjects, since he just skipped on... Uh, as a, what's it called? As a substitute, because I had no one else. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, you kind of uh, <laughs> just need to have somebody fill in for you, so here I am. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> I appreciate it. Yeah, we've already been uh, discussing just everything here and there for the last hour and a half. <laughs> yeah, but that's, that's the thing. You should, have, yeah. you should have told me to, from the start to record. Yeah, I should have told you. <laughs> we were talking about... Uh, about your social worker, and uh, uh, <laughs> we're going to talk about the uh, the uh, comparison of the police states of Denmark and <laughs> the U.S. It's pretty interesting, except uh, not much about. Oh yeah, we should tell that uh, tell your viewers that I'm from the U.S. I don't know if. Oh right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> we're having a hard time drawing parallels between the U.S. and Denmark, but yeah. here we are. Let's do this. <laughs> it should work. We can, we can make something interesting, I think. Perhaps. Um, so, you, you mentioned your social worker that you get when you're born in Denmark. I, like, yeah, how... you get a social security number, and if you ever need to get uh, get something from the government, something of what you're entitled to, you you get in touch with them and you get appointed to a specific social worker. So like this is that only happens like after you get like after you need something the first time or like well, I, I think actually uh, that you have one from the beginning. Okay, so and, they assign a person to you when you're born. Then when you get uh, 18 or something I think you, you just automatically lace it off until you need them. I'm not sure about that. I think that that's how it worked for me. I see. So it's kind of like almost like a child protective Services yeah, you, could, person. you could say something like that, except protective and protective. Yeah, you get you get nothing like I mean, you get a social security number when you're born in the U.S., but uh, you get no caseworker. That's uh, that is crazy to me that <laughs> they have somebody like that involved with your life. Yeah, the, from the, the beginning, it's just the the government owns you here. That's how it is. <laughs> yeah, no, that's awful. Yeah, I was going to try to compare that to the. Uh, if you don't to the police state, uh, <laughs> you know, with the whole militarization of the police in Ferguson, Missouri, right now, uh, and all that. But yeah, I was just blown away when you told me that when we started talking. <laughs> if uh, if the government tells you to give your kids ADHD medicine and you refuse, they'll take your kid. What if the kid like? No, there's been a couple of cases with that where the parents refused to give their kids the medicine and the government actually told them that they would take the kid if they refused. So, Did anybody continue refusing at that point? I, I think there have been a couple of cases. Like, like what happened? Like would they get, like did they actually break into their house and like police and arrest them and take the kid, like physically take the kid? I actually have some, some uh, footage of the, the, an ex, an, a situation exactly like that. I'm not sure why they did it, but there were social workers who, with violence, took the kid away, and there were police to back them up that didn't do anything at all. <laughs> it's insane. That is insane. Uh, uh, that sort of thing has happened here in the U.S., uh, but it, it, it's actually, you know, it, uh, it's actually almost better the way you guys have it in the sense that at least you know what gets your kid taken away. Like, in the U.S., it's like you can be like you can not even know like all of a sudden just one day they're gonna like take your kids because yeah. of some made up infraction you yeah, know you, but, if you smoke cannabis over there they take your kid right uh potentially again that's again that's one of those hit or miss things like i mean yeah. sometimes no sometimes yes uh, it depends on it depends on probably really the mood of the person in charge of making that decision that day you know, whether they've had a good day or not, you know, whether they're pissed off or maybe it's, maybe, uh, maybe it's how 
dangerous the person who's trying to get like maybe if it's like your girlfriend or something gets mad at you right. your, your wife gets mad at you or something your ex-wife and she wants to screw you over you know if she makes it seem like like your violence then i mean if if there's any degree of violence then yeah maybe they'll come after your kids then but uh, but they might also use like drugs as a pretext to get into your house to begin with and they'll just use that as another way to leverage yeah okay you know, charges against you to make you try to submit you know there have been a lot of cases over here where where they don't do anything with child abusers actually where People are allowed to beat their kids, and then oh, they'll just get a reprimand or something. Yeah, well, like over here, like you're allowed to like spank your kids and stuff like that. I'm not sure that's legal anymore here, actually. No. Like a dog. <laughs> yeah, now you can get away with quite a lot over here, but again, it's a that's why it's difficult because it's so hit or miss, and it also it, depends it, it varies to... from one town to the next, not just one state to the next. You know, some. Depends on it depends on if the police in that place wants to be heavy handed or not that day. Mm. Yeah, so I mean it's one of those, like in the US it's not really rule of law anymore. There's really just if a government if a person who is employed by the government wants to hurt you, then they'll find a way to they'll find a reason to do it. <laughs> and all, the rest of the government's gonna back them up. Oh they'll just fabricate something exactly they, they'll like who was that was that that the russian the the soviet guy there beria whatever his first name was there he was like the kgb guy you know find find me the person and i'll find you the crime oh right yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> but at least over here they they don't take the kids away if you smoke cannabis i know a lot of people who smoke and that have kids where their social workers know about it so yeah, well, in in the U.S., they they wouldn't probably. You would never want to tell any government employee that you do any drug, other than <laughs> alcohol or cigarettes. You know the legal ones. That's sugar. Uh, but uh, yeah, it, it, a lot of social workers, if they personally don't mind marijuana, they probably wouldn't mind if you smoke cannabis. Some of them, if they're like you know right winger conservative types, and they take offense, then they might call the cops on you and try to get you in trouble for that. And then after you're in trouble for that reason, yes, then they might, right? Then they start looking for other reasons, and then eventually, yeah, it doesn't take a whole lot for them to decide to take your kid. But they won't they won't take your kid specifically because you smoke pot. It's right. because they found other reasons or made up other reasons. Yeah, you still have the largest prison population in the world. Yeah, <laughs> what is it? Twenty five percent. Yeah, it's twenty five percent of the world's prison population population I th or something like that and what is like 90 percent of that is marijuana cases uh yeah i don't know the percentage of marijuana cases but just drug non-violent drug wow. charges in general uh yeah the vast majority are that i mean i've seen a chart where it's like you know uh uh before the war on drugs it's all like this and then as soon as the war on drugs you know it goes <laughs> off the charts you know yeah it's, 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 it's horrendous, actually. And yeah. that, it was like what we talked about earlier, where the with the kids and the epilepsy, where with Dr. Sanjay Gupta, Gupta. Like, I don't know how to pronounce. I don't know. I don't know who he is. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, you were telling me about him. He, he used to be a pretty. He used to be against legalization, but then he started to. He made a documentary. He made two. So he did some research into it. And yeah, and and the stuff he found about epilepsy and kids is just amazing. And I don't get it why people would still want to criminalize when you should really think about the kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they need to legalize pot for the children. <laughs> uh, and, and, and yeah. The funny part about that is it's actually an argument they use against it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Well, I, know, I, funny, I think but... I think a lot of people have the whole gateway drug uh, mindset. You know, they think that if you start smoking weed, then you're all of a sudden going to start using cocaine, and then you're going to get into heroin, and then you're going to die. Yeah. <laughs> you know, which is there's, there are more drugs than 
breast milk. <laughs> yeah, well, well, and that's the thing. Uh, that's actually my main argument against yeah. drugs is that it's like, well, you know, they have all these laws now, but you know, I've never, I've never even seen heroin in person. But yeah. I guarantee you, within 24 hours of making a bet, I could have heroin in my hand. <laughs> you know, yeah, I, it's everywhere. You can get it wherever the hell you want. <laughs> and, and and it's the actually the the gateway drug argument is just ridiculous because yeah, no, every just... single addict in the world have had breast milk. <laughs> <laughs> so, and and well, that's the thing. Where do you draw the line? Well, it's like yeah, everybody's. <laughs> Everybody's eating a steak at one point, so I guess maybe steak can uh, lead you to to do heroin or yeah, and crack cocaine. It's actually a drug. It, it produces oh, it? chemicals <laughs> in the brain when you drink it, or, or at least for an, an infant, anyway. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. It, 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 I, I, the whole premise that they started with uh, with the gateway drug argument was silly because it's like, well, yeah, of course, of course, if you're going to use the harder drugs, obviously you're going to have used the softer drugs too, but that's not because that doesn't have to say that the softer drugs caused you to use the harder drugs. You know, it, it's uh, the whole thing is just, yeah, I, I actually started out with cannabis and then I started to smoke cigarettes and, and cannabis began to bore me and I started with amphetamine instead. So, oh, yeah? but, but it wasn't because of, of cannabis led me to it. It was because, Hey, I can be social now. Yeah, no, you would have started using the amphetamine anyway. It's yeah, just... and, and I have something in common with other people, so that's why I started to use it. So, yeah. but I'm not gonna do that because that was I didn't get anything out of it. I can't be get a, I don't get any real uh, any real uh, what's it called like high. Yeah, like a... uh, out of it, I can go to sleep right after. It's no problem. I can stay awake, but I I can sleep. So. I don't really get anything out of it, but with yeah. cannabis, I, it takes away my pains, and and I, I get uh, I can focus on stuff. So I I smoke a lot when I'm sitting uh, and reading, for example, and it helps a lot. So I don't get why people think that it's a it's a gateway drug when I clearly didn't start to smoke can cannabis because. No, that's not right. I clearly didn't start using uh, amphetamine because I was smoking cannabis. <laughs> it was, I started yeah. amphetamine because cannabis... Well, no, it's silly anyway. I mean, uh, alcohol is almost universally legal everywhere. And it kills. Yeah, and that's a way more dangerous drug. I mean, even if they were talking about the dangers, even if even if cannabis was a gateway drug, even if it did cause you to use other drugs, I mean, everybody else... There's a ton of people who are drinking alcohol who never touched marijuana or cannabis or anything like that, and that's way more dangerous. <laughs> yeah, it's just stupid. Yeah, no, I, uh, I don't even. That's the only reason why I've ever used any sort of drug like alcohol or, uh, well, namely alcohol, because uh, as a as a social crutch, you know, to help me socialize with people because I've always been pretty antisocial, asocial, like we were talking about before. Got to stop using the word antisocial. I'm asocial. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't actually even drink very often anymore. I, I, I haven't so. been drunk for years, actually. Yeah. I had a beer or something, but... I, yeah, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna drink, it's usually wine. Now, I... I it doesn't interest me. I, I, I don't know what I'm doing when I'm drunk, so... <laughs> so it's not, you don't know. You don't know what you're doing. No, not really. Uh, <laughs> right, yeah. I, I know. I know what I'm doing. I just I don't care. I I get very well. Obviously, you get uninhibited. That's the whole point of, of alcohol, I guess. You just don't care about yeah. consequences as much. Well, it's been a couple of years since I had a. I've been out drinking last, so maybe I can control it now. I'm not sure. But back then, I had really no idea what I was doing. I, oh wow! I had I had no control over myself. Yeah, that's totally different than what I ever got out of. That's crazy. <laughs> I wouldn't I wouldn't drink if I were you. Then <laughs> that's what I was getting but, out of it. But I had learned back then how to control myself without being drunk anyway. So <laughs> might have been a reason. Yeah, that's crazy, man. <laughs> so what do you guys? Um, you said your cops carry firearms over yeah. there in Denmark. They do. 
that's crazy. Yep. I mean, obviously, it's not uh, not anything like probably what the U.S. is packing. No, not at all. But, but any... at least we have guns. The civilians have guns over here. <laughs> you know. We have. A, if you get a license, you can have a gun. But it's mainly hunters. So, and they have to be locked in in a in a pretty huge safe. You... Huh. Yeah, that was my next question. I was going to ask is if it's possible to get guns. Well, well, it is, but yeah, but, but, huh. but not that easy. You have to get a license, and that can be. I'm not sure actually now. It could be easily. My uh, both both. So they probably they probably take away your license anytime they want for any yeah, reason. Yeah. Probably my dad and his dad have uh, both have uh, hunting licenses and we have uh, rifle licenses. Yeah. So and they have uh, they both have rifles in the houses. Nice. Yeah. Now I saw that comment you left on my Facebook message a while back where I'm gonna show you <laughs> where I have my gun out <laughs> at post. <Pulpit>. Uh. <laughs> You're like, oh, you're going to show me how to shoot that thing. Huh. Yeah, hey, uh, <laughs> if I ever see you, I'll show you how to shoot it. <laughs> <laughs> but I know I know how to shoot. I, uh, I grew when I was uh, in public school. We actually had a, a basement downstairs where there was a shooting range. And there nice. was some, uh, I'm not sure what kind of guns there were, but there were some, there, there were guns. I'm not sure they were lethal. I can't remember, actually. But, <laughs> But there was shooting practice down there, and I learned how to shoot. And since my both my dad and his dad are hunters, I've been on uh, out hunting with them a lot when I was a kid. And they took me to shoot. Uh, what are they, they called those uh, flying things? Uh, oh, clay pigeons. Yeah, clay pigeons. Yeah. That's actually so. It's actually a little literal translation i had no idea really yeah oh huh. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, i i didn't I, I couldn't get that into my head so one word i didn't know <laughs> <sighs> no. oh man so uh, now what to talk about <laughs> well, the what we were talking about the about legalization of cannabis and over here, if you uh, get stopped and they can measure that, that you smoked, just that, just that they can measure that you have smoked, that could be eight weeks ago if you have a, a low, uh, yeah, if you don't get it out of your body fast enough. So they, they'll take your driver's license. Just <laughs> that they can measure it. That's even, really even like, on, how, how do they measure? Like, is that a blood test? Yeah, I think so. Actually. Or they, like piss test, like maybe maybe piss test. I'm not sure actually. Yeah, I think it's a piss test because you can take that straight away. Blood test that takes like a week or two. Uh, yeah. So they like test you right on the side of the road or something. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> if they, they pull you over. <laughs> actually, they. I, I would imagine that because they don't care if they have to strip people naked to search them. So, yeah, they could probably do that. That's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> we uh, there was actually one of the youth politicians from the the Liberal Party over here. He uh, got stopped on the Copenhagen train station, and he got pulled into a room, and he was forced to take off his clothes. And he he actually recorded the episode, but not uh, not him taking off the clothes. And it was just ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> it was, do as I say. I am authority. I am correct. <laughs> Man, yeah, no, they they test you regularly if they think you're drunk, you know, alcohol in the uh, U.S. But they don't. Uh, I don't think they can legally um, test you for anything else in the U.S. They can force blood samples from you here. <laughs> Oh man, yeah. No, the, the, I think that they they can pretty much like pull you over, and if they really want to, they can probably get a judge <clears throat> to get a warrant, and then once the warrant is issued, then they can get like a blood test from you or something. Uh, in the U.S., I don't, I I don't know if they would ever do that though, because I don't, I, not for a traffic stop anyway, because in the U.S. Uh, you can have substances, I think. Like, they don't have, like, a legal limit for any substance in your blood, except for alcohol. So it's kind of weird. It's like, I, I, I don't know if, they, if you can get in trouble for, like, 
like being like 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 if you like are on cocaine or something. I don't know if you could get in trouble for like being on cocaine and driving in the U.S. I don't even know because I don't I don't know if they have any way of testing it other than like a blood test. I'm not sure you would either. Here we have a zero tolerance for cannabis. That's it. That's the re- yeah, yeah. No, they. I don't think you can get in trouble for having it in your blood in the U.S. Uh, maybe maybe in certain maybe it varies by it probably varies by state. There's probably no federal no. statute. Yeah. Most of the most of the driving laws and things like that in the U.S. are all done state by state. Uh, I see. Was well, actually in Copenhagen they they do a lot of raids on Christiania, which I was telling you about before, and just not far from there actually there are a bunch of streets where they sell heroin openly, but they never <laughs> back down on those. Huh. So it just ridiculous the laws down here and the zero tolerance policy and and uh, so it's like they really crack down on the cannabis but they don't at all care about the, some of these other drugs we have actually uh, set up um, these uh, toilet things in Copenhagen for heroin addicts so they can go in there and shoot that young <laughs> so <laughs> it's it's ridiculous. Do they do they have like uh, detox centers and stuff? Yeah. For, like that you can go into without getting in trouble. No. No. <laughs> okay. Because uh, that's I guess they have that in some places. Uh, not in the U.S. They have that in some countries. I can't remember. Like maybe Canada. I can't remember. They have some place like some countries where it's like yeah, it's like the drug is illegal, but they'll let you. Like they have detox centers that are run by the the government, the various governments. Yeah. Where you can go in, like, and they you won't get in trouble if you like go in. I was uh, actually two and a half years in rehab for my amphetamine problem, <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, it was a private institution. Well, private and private, and the government is. is was it for? Were you forced to go to it? No, I chose it voluntarily. Nice, but uh, uh, it's it was funded by the government since the government was paying for me being there, and. It was actually a pretty good place to be, but a lot of the people there, a lot of the kids there, they were, they didn't want to be there. And it was, they were there because they had uh, court orders to be there. Because they were forced together, yeah. 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 And, and you could tell that, actually. They didn't want to get clean. Well, no, and, they, and I'm sure they probably didn't. As soon as they got out of there, yeah, they, so they went right back. Of, yeah, yeah, they, yeah, no, it's... Yeah. That's just the that's again that's just the asininity of of uh, drug laws. You know, nobody follows them. <laughs> if you don't want to do drugs, you don't do drugs. If you want to do drugs, you do drugs. I, I think the the last the survey, survey I, I think the last survey I saw was that eighty percent of the population in Denmark has tried cannabis once in their life. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> stupid. <laughs> How many people? What's the drinking age over there? Eighteen. Sixteen. Six, six, wow, 16, that's great. It's 21 that's, in the U.S. That's alcohol. <laughs> it's not dangerous. Yeah, no, it's like how many people, so I was going to ask how many people over there are drinking before the drinking age, before they're of age. I think right now, I think it's almost every 14-year-old. Yeah, there you go. So that. Yeah, as soon as they enter like high school. Yeah, so no, I think it starts out back in public school. We have 10 grades of public school here. Oh, okay, yeah, we have 12 in the U.S. Like, four, the last four years are what they call high school in the U.S. Yeah, we, we just, I, what I call public school is just what it's called. It's a direct Oh, okay, test. so they just have public school and it's just one through and, ten. And we have stuff after that. Everything is public school over here, actually. Okay, well, yeah, well, yeah, they have, it's all public school over here. Well, I mean, they have their various private schools, but they have... Typically, it's all public school, but they have like, like first through sixth grade they call elementary school, yeah, and then seventh and eighth grade they call middle school, and then ninth through twelfth grade they call high school, typically. Yeah, 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 I remember something like that, but we just have one name for it up until tenth grade, and then you can go to various other things. (laughs) <laughs> like, vo- like vocational schools and trade schools and stuff like that. Yeah. Like after tenth grade, you would start. Yeah, 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 and universities, and we have yeah. some similar to co- colleges. That sounds like a lot better way of doing it. In the U.S., it's like you pretty much have it's all it's all done kind of by 
by state, uh, really, the different states. And I think probably more, like, they have different school districts within the states, like, within the towns and the counties. And they all sort of have their general curriculum that you learn from 1 through 12. Yeah, so. you <laughs> have a different set of uh, cur- curriculum for, for each state. We have just one. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, it's, it's got its advantages and disadvantages. I I think you guys probably have it better in the sense that, first of all, it's only 10 years, and then you get to actually go do like a sort of a a trade school, I guess. That's what I'm getting at. It's like, is it like a trade school? Like you get to go like learn a particular uh, like thing to do for a career or something? Yeah, yeah, you could say that. I think, okay. but but then again, I'm no, I'm not sure about it actually. You weren't paying attention during all that. I don't blame you. Well, I, I <laughs> around fifth grade, actually. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I was bullied a lot in school, so I just stopped going, and so yeah. then I had some. A, a, bit of experience with it but not that much i didn't it didn't interest me at all yeah me neither i i was uh, i was a loner throughout school and i i did get bullied a little bit in the later grades like in high school i was bullied a bit it wasn't a big deal uh i was only really for the first two years after that <laughs> it was like i was more or less just left alone i was just kind of the weird <laughs> the weird kid nobody talked to yeah uh, <laughs> Yeah, I bet that's probably a common thread through a lot of uh, anarchists and libertarian types. Yeah, probably probably. just being the odd man out. <laughs> probably, but then again, it's something in common with a lot of other people as well. So, oh well, yeah, I, I think a lot of the the school shooter types are probably like that too. <laughs> yeah, bro. <probably. laughs> so it's like either you go one direction or the other, either but what? either an anarchist <laughs> or you become a school shooter. <laughs> Yeah, or you become a, a communist. <laughs> yeah, a straight up socialist. Yeah, it's like yeah. you either go, you either become a straight up authoritarian, like totalitarian, want to rule everything, or you, uh, or you go the other way and just want to be left alone, and want to leave everybody else alone. Yeah, and all the bullies just become cops or politicians. Yeah, and, and the co- yeah, and the bullies are the ones who become the enforcers of the ones who become the authoritarians <laughs> that's that's the best thing about public school everyone gets to know their place <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's that's the only thing you learn in public school <laughs> you learn how to read and write and do plus and minus and repeat and, and, and learn <laughs> and learn where you end up on the social ladder <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's not even funny, actually. But. No, it's uh, well. That's the thing. It's if we weren't laughing, we'd actually be crying about it. Yeah, I think yeah. it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's self-defense right now. <laughs> yeah, yep, yeah. I'd be awfully depressed if I wasn't so uh, just laughing about it. <laughs> kind of am depressed, really. I don't know. <laughs> it's like that. It's like that picture. Get some pills then. <laughs> well, I think they have something for that. <laughs> probably. Well, you're probably smoking. Well, not right now. You're smoking a cigarette, but uh, before you were probably smoking the cure. <laughs> I don't know. I, the only reason why I don't smoke uh, cannabis is because uh, I, I don't like the uh, I don't like I don't like the the burn. First of all, just of the smoke. And just like the after effects of that, I don't know. I, I, I've never done well with. Drugs. So, so basically, you don't like the taste of how it works. Yeah. Well, yeah, I like the effect. The effect is nice, but also then like I often just like passed out. That was like the effect of it. So you smoke too much. <laughs> yeah. Usually, well, that's that's the way it is with every drug, including alcohol. Like I. You don't know when to quit. I don't know when to quit. I I just <laughs> I just keep pouring it into me, and I end up passed out. Whether it's alcohol, with alcohol I'll puke first, puke everywhere, feel I disgusting, and then as well, actually. yeah, and then pass out. With with pot, it was uh, you know with cannabis, I'd just I I'd, I'd smoke it, and then I'd get really hungry, eat a lot of potato chips, <laughs> and then and then pass out somewhere. I, I sometimes with cannabis, I've had that experience where I smoke a little bit too much, and then <laughs> I go puke. 
Uh, I, really, I really should do that again someday just to see if it's any different. Cause, I mean, it's been many, many, many years since I got that high. Well, we're going to Mexico sometime. and I'll grow oh, yeah, dude. I'll If we ever make it to Mexico. <laughs> I'll throw you some shit. That would be good. If we ever make it to Mexico, we'll definitely have to right, you have do some experimenting. You have a problem. You actually have to get out of the country. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Well, I, I have the build walls yet over there. Yeah, well, the, they have fences. They talk about building the wall for Mexico. Oh shit! I'm actually, I'm actually not too worried about it because I mean, I, I could always go to Canada. I could drive to Canada. Canada's yeah, only. I'm, like, I'm four, pretty sure they'll build a wall up there as well. <laughs> well, they might, but they'll build that wall. I bet after. But I get, I tell you what, if they start building that wall down in Mexico, I'm probably going. <laughs> I'm probably going to start leaving immediately after that. So they'll have to build all the. They'll have to build the wall immediately everywhere in order to prevent me from leaving. Because I will, I will go to another country and then I'll go to where I want to go from there. They'll just build it somewhere else and hiding and transport it by helicopter. <laughs> they might have to. They'll have to do it like they'll have to build it exactly in the shape of the border. Yeah. That's the entire span of the U.S. and then just. They'll like build air, it. like air, air drop it into the U.S. They'll, they'll, they'll hire SpaceX to build it in space and just drop it on. <laughs> Since yep. they don't know how to do it themselves. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of your advantage there in Denmark, man. They, they don't they don't ever talk about restricting your movement there. They just well, I guess they probably they might they might talk about it with like the EU in general, but like you don't have to worry about Denmark doing it. Yeah. Well, I could always go to Germany and get a plane ticket for like fifty percent of the price or something. Yeah, see, there you go. It'd, it'd actually be cheaper to, for you to leave your country before you leave your country. Uh, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, uh, what a ticket to Mexico is like five thousand, no, a thousand dollars or something. Really? Yeah. Well, that's not terrible. I mean, it would cost me about a thousand dollars to get to like South America. It would probably be about five hundred, probably between five and six hundred dollars U.S. to get from where I am to Mexico, Mexico City. So that that's actually why I would go to Mexico. I I would actually probably prefer to go to like Chile. Yeah, but the the plane ticket from here is three times the price. Yeah, exactly. It costs just that much more to get there. So might as well just go to Mexico. If I don't like it a whole lot there, then I can just you know. Mm. Go the rest of the way to Chile or, or Paraguay. I'm thinking about going to Gauss Gauss as well. So yeah, yeah, well, that's why I would go to Chile. I I I'd definitely probably set up in Santiago or something, and then and then uh, take a trip out to to Gauss Gulch to check it out just to see what's going on. I couldn't afford to buy anything there. No, oh, the same here actually. <laughs> uh, when Bitcoin hits a higher price, I might. Yep, to... Bitcoin or uh, I've, I've got some gold stocks, so maybe if those take off. <laughs> Yeah, I should probably invest some more, but yeah, man, I, the economy uh, over here is just as bad as. In, well, yeah, that's the thing. It's like I, I make, I, I should, I, I could afford to probably say more than I do, but I feel bad about it. But yeah, uh, cutting down on my expenses a lot lately to save up. So. Yeah, no, I. I tell you, I, I probably have enough Bitcoin where if it really took off, I'd probably have enough right now where it'd probably be. I mean, it doesn't take a lot. You know, I have probably like three Bitcoin. <laughs> three Bitcoin, if it really took off, that would probably be plenty to, to get me wherever I wanted to go. If it, if it hits 5% of the economy, you could actually be pretty wealthy. Yeah, yeah, so exactly. I mean, if, if, even if I just had lower six figures, that would be plenty enough to, to go wherever the hell I want. If it's just 1% to 5%, then. Most people in the Bitcoin world right now would be set for that, actually. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> it's, it's pretty awesome. And, and, and it's growing. It's been doing pretty good lately, even though it's been dropping in price. That's, yeah, that's yeah. It, well, it was, it was earlier. I don't even know what the price is at this moment. But, uh, I mean, yesterday it bottomed out at something like you know, almost $400. Like it, it almost dropped to 400 bucks. And the last I saw it was down to four eighty or something. Yeah, right now it's at five twenty one according yeah. to my to my uh, thing here. But yeah, <laughs> it's I'm, I'm I would hope that it would take off. I use it quite a lot when I you can't use it that much over here, but I I, I buy them to spend it on other things on the internet. 
Donate. Yeah, I, I, I should probably start buying it to use. But right <laughs> I've only been buying it to just hold on to. Yeah, I, I have a, a tiny saving amount that I'm not touching, and then I have some another account with some some I'm using when where I buy regularly to uh, when I donate to people. Like so, uh, as an example, I buy a bit over the amount I'm donating, so I'll put a little bit extra aside like that. Yeah, I uh, I have a, a couple of accounts. I have one I, like on a flash drive. That's where I keep like the stuff I'm saving. Yeah, uh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I have my wallet on a lot of different things. Just if one breaks, I have a bag up somewhere. Yep, yeah. Uh, I, I do have uh, several accounts. I have an account with Zappo, a company called Zappo X A P O dot com. Yeah. Uh, they they apparently have a a, a like a debit card, like a Bitcoin debit card. They, and it's like through MasterCard. Really? So it's like you can use it like like anywhere. Like yeah. MasterCard is accepted. Apparently it's in Europe right now. They don't have it in the U.S. yet, the debit card. So you might want to get the card. MasterCard has, been, has gone into that? Well, I don't know exact details. I, I want to say probably the way it works is that you have Bitcoin in your Zappo account and then you run the MasterCard like probably charges an account that Zappo has, and then they oh. trade in your Bitcoin for you know, like all, it's all done automatically. I think. Yeah, of course. But, yeah, I don't know exactly how the back end of it works, no, but it I could, but basically. But basically, all you do is you have a Bitcoin account, you put Bitcoins into it, and then you have the debit card, and you just use it like a regular debit card. Yeah, that's apparently how it works. So yeah, that could be pretty cool, actually. Yeah, I'll send I'll, I'll I'll send you some details on it. Uh, oh, let's look at that. Yeah, no, it's cool. <laughs> I, I heard they had the debit card out uh, in Europe. I don't know if it's only in specific places in Europe. Uh, it's supposed to be coming to the U.S. soon, anyway. I have a Zappo account, but I can't get the card yet. That would give me a reason to get even more Bitcoin and just get rid of my fiat. Yeah, you don't even have a friggin' you don't even need a bank account anymore, really. You'd have the bank account to take your your fiat dollars, uh, and, then, money, and then immediately to send it to your Zappo. You know, to your, to your Bitcoin. I can actually get rid of my fiat now. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, there you go. So look into that, man. If it works, that'd be great. Yeah, I have to look at that. look at that. That would be so amazing. Yeah, nice. So I think time's up with about a couple of minutes, so we have okay. to end it right here. All right. Well. uh... Yeah, uh, great talking to you, man. Anyway, uh, I want to plug my website. Uh, sure thing. Anarchoaggregator.com. I have a website. What I basically do is just uh, gather some news stories and stuff every day and just post up some stuff on my site. It's kind of like a Lou Rockwell sort of thing, maybe like a Drudge Report. Yeah, I'll, for post, it, uh, I'll post them in the description. Perfect. That would be great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for doing this, Adam. All right, th thanks for having me, Michael. It was great. It's been a pleasure.